this is the part where I test to see how we're Oh, I was going to say, is it recording? <laughs> <laughs>
be called a hero. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, so each sage has, each of the 12 has kind of two perspectives. One is the outward journey of what's happening, and one is the inward journey of kind of what's going through the brain thought process of the hero as they're experiencing the story. Number one is the ordinary world. <laughs> yeah, this is that part of every story that just sets the stage for what's going on. What is the hero's everyday, ordinary, uneventful world? It could be boring, plain, awful, or it could be, you know, in my people's case, like when they're in active addictions, constantly chaos, drama, sickness, illness, it, but it's the same in, same out every single day in, day out. It's just what happens on an everyday basis for the hero. I just keep thinking of uh, Little Mermaid, like, part of this world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that was the, the beginning, too. So she was probably kind of sitting there like, Hmm. Yeah, that's the one thing about the ordinary world is that usually there's some sort of desire for something more. That's what I love about the stage because although like we live in autopilot most days, we go through the motions of life, we all have some sort of calling or desire for more. And that's not a bad thing. I appreciate so much what I have in my life, but it's still okay to want more. Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, it, it could be anything. When I say more, finances or fun or uh, people or connections or quiet time, you know, mm -hmm. in the ordinary world, there's always some sort of clue or desire for something more. So if I want to use The Wizard of Oz, for example, I love this movie because it really shows um, the black and white is very significant and symbolic because the ordinary world is in black and white. She lives on a farm with Auntie M and Uncle Henry and her dog. She's just, you know, going through the motions of what they do in a farm. But her calling for something more is when she sings about going over the rainbow. She knows somewhere out in the world there's color and that over that rainbow there's bluebirds and singing people and happy people and it's a lot different than what her, her ordinary world is. I had chills with that by the way. Yes. I'm like oh my gosh I'm like you're right it did start out in black and white and then color I'm like oh the very rainbow song. Why did I never know? Yes. But yeah. Um, same thing with Harry Potter. Like, mm. his ordinary world was under the cupboard in his aunt and uncle's house. Like, he knew there was no other world out there, but he still had some sort of thought that, what more? This can't be all that there is to life. There's got to be something more to it. But he had no clue until death and talk. You're no <laughs> other than Harry. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, as storytelling goes, something always happens, right? You can't stay in your ordinary world forever. So stage two is the call to adventure, where something or someone shakes up that ordinary world. And it's kind of that part of the story where you know it's not going to be the same story all the way through the story. It's something's going to happen. It could be just a real strong internal desire to rise up and make a change, or it could be an external force. So if you remember back to the Wizard of Oz, what was the external force? The hurricane? Tornado. Tornado. <laughs> tornado. Same thing, I, I suppose. I had a dream with a hurricane in it, so now I'm like drawing parallels. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm like, it's the hurricane. <laughs> tornado, right. Tornado. Yeah, it really shook up her ordinary yeah. world and took her out of um, Kansas. She didn't have a choice in the matter of whether or not she wanted to leave. She, the tornado swept that away. Yeah. I know when I was writing this for myself, when I got to this point, I wrote about my own journey. You know, I was dealing with depression and anxiety for a while, and I was doing a lot of why me, why me, and I was very codependent on my boyfriend at the time. And what really shook up my world was we, it was just too much for both of us, and we broke up. And then all of a sudden I'm realizing that I needed to take on the world by myself, I needed to build that strength within myself, and me, myself, and I. So that was the big, like, boom kind of moment where I realized, okay, yeah, I really do need to change this. So you yeah. had the internal call. Definitely, yeah. You definitely felt that internal desire to do something. You know, and, and movies commonly something else, an external thing. So for The Wizard of Oz, it was the tornado, or in Harry Potter, what ha do you remember what happened in that movie? What well, was it, The Wizard? The first one. The, all the, the letters the letters else. started coming so yeah. he's like oh what's going on here there's got to be something else what are they trying to hide from me there's something else going on um, which kind of really clued him in so those were like the little hints that, yeah. so the ordinary world is limited awareness 
of a problem or a need to change. The call to adventure is what we call the pre or the contemplation stage of change where you are thinking about it. You know now there's something more out there. You haven't yet committed to it, but your mind is rolling, your, your wheels are turning that some kind of change, something is gonna happen, something needs to be done to take you out of the ordinary everyday world. I, I have to point out that whenever I think of Call to Adventure, I get the Indiana Jones theme stuck in my head. Like, <laughs> da -da -da, da -da -da. Okay. But first, before the action starts happening, mm -hmm. very commonly, because change is uncomfortable, stage three is refusal of the call or fear. That is a common normal, I hate that word because what's normal, but yeah. like necessary part of change mm. is fear. No, it's inevitable. Nobody can avoid fear when a change is going to be made because there's so much unknown. We don't know what's to come. Even in every story or movie, the character or the hero will go through a pattern of fear and it's depicted in different ways. I know in my life, my fear has pulled me back from doing anything. <laughs> fear manifests in many different ways for me. Procrastination is a huge one. Literal fear, anxiety, shakes, <laughs> hives. <laughs> you know, I, I think fear has such negative connotation where mm -hmm. fear is bad. Mm -hmm. but fear is necessary. Mm -hmm. This really shows that, you know, fear is resistance of the change that needs to be made. And it's a necessary part of the story to show that. It's a, pro a part of everybody's process that you have to work through. Yeah. I mean, that's life, right? Is busting through our fear to get to the next stage. Oh, yeah. so. I, I think about when I was in inpatient for eating disorders, every morning I would write a new or draw a new picture for myself as a coal. And there was one that I, I drew myself, and then there was a signpost that said, too uncomfortable, but to get to comfort. And you know you want to make that change, but it's still scary just like getting out of that mm -hmm. pattern. Yeah. Because what, what's out there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you don't get out of that fear, your story stops here, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, it is not a pleasant experience, but it's one that uh, we need to get through to get to the next part of our story. So if you think in The Wizard of Oz, kind of goes backwards in the story a little bit, before the tornado, when she went to go see the professor at the fair in the crystal ball, and he told her, because she said, you know, I think I want to leave. Kansas, mm -hmm. and he told her, do you remember when he looked in the crystal ball? It's been a while since I saw it. I know, it was me too. That, yeah. <laughs> um, that Dorothy's aunt was sick. Mm -hmm. So if she were to leave the farm, she might miss her passing or she might not be there oh. for her family. So that was so really her fear call, her, her fear, her resistance to leave Kansas because somebody back home needed her. Yeah. Um, so fear, again, fear can manifest in so many different ways. In my personal development, I follow Mastin Kip quite a bit. He's one of the coaches that I absolutely love following and one of his quotes says, unless we're in mortal danger, fear is a compass guiding us to where we need to go next. So again, we do everything in our power to try to avoid fear, mm -hmm. but in all reality, that's like our clue, like go that way, work through that, go on with your story. Yeah, I keep thinking of different moments in my own life when that feeling came up for myself and I was able to work through it. When I first had my first big photo shoot and it was like a fashion thing and it was at a vintage boutique and there were models around getting their hair and makeup done and for a moment I realized, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to direct these people. I have never done this before. And I had a little panic moment where I was just kind of by myself setting things up and reorganizing lighting equipment and I just was like, oh my gosh. I'm like. But no, if I don't fight through this and I just like all of a sudden get up and leave and run out the door, that I'll never know what this what comes out of this. And now I have amazing photos and that experience that I can be like, I've done that, I have the experience now. And it wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't. It was awesome actually. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. But we're heroes. So we work through our fear. So we're working to the next stage. And this is, uh, I love that, by the way. Like, <laughs> we're heroes. Just to so remind you. Just to remind you. Yeah. Yes. Because we're heroes. We decided that although we're scared, we're going to go on with our story. And so stage four is called meeting with the mentors. When you guide... Um, Look, it's a mentor. A mentor. I don't know a mentor if you need one. Absolutely. You find some sort of person who will give you tools, knowledge, guidance. Most of the mentors would be somebody that's been there. So for my guys and girls in addiction and, and therapy, we tell them to get a sponsor or call out to a higher power. But this would be something or someone that's giving you tools and equipment to go through the rest of your story, to go through this weird, unordinary world 
to experience it, but have enough kind of guidance that you're going to succeed through the world. If we know anything about change, is that we can't do it alone. If we were gonna make that change by ourselves, we would have done it by now. We need some sort of person or guide to get us there, to get us through the rest of the story. Do you have any mentors in your life that you can speak to that have helped you get through some of your fear or changes that you made in your life? Yes, quite a few. I think about different areas of my life and the mentors that are there. I know Jen, she's also a photographer, and I've learned a lot about just building a business from her and photography in mm -hmm. general, lighting equipment. And then I think of my friend who started an Etsy shop and she's now renovating a, a van now too. She's just so creative and she's multi-passionate. Seeing how she balances all those different passions has helped me realize, okay, I can do this too. And then I think of anyone who has kids in a family, mm -hmm. like you and mm -hmm. your, your mm -hmm. daughter Riley, so sweet. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Taking notes. You know, <laughs> from whenever I'm ready to be a mom. So. Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. There's a lot of people to look up to, for sure, oh, yeah. in this world, which is cool. And the same with the storytelling. Dorothy very quickly met the good witch. Of Are you a good witch and or a bad, bad witch? witch? I mean, imagine waking up in a land that is now yellow and, and colorful, and there's little people running around. <laughs> it's very helpful for her to have met a friendly face that yeah. she can point the out. The bubble, right? Yeah, she, yes, she came in the bubble. Yeah. And then... For Harry Potter, he and that Hagrid, who has got to be my favorite character of all time. I just love his heart, mm -hmm. um, and the, the you know the big friendly giant mm -hmm. you know, of some sort. He was immediately his mentor, and he met Dumbledore along the way as well. But Hagrid was his guide from the start. A thing to point out about the mentor, though, is. They don't always have all of the answers. You have to learn some lessons for yourself, so they're not gonna give it away. That's always a key part of, of the story is that the mentor is not a know-it-all, and they're not gonna tell you exactly how the story goes because that would give the story away. Mm -hmm. So they will give you guidance and support and encouragement and a little bit of, here's what's happening next, a little bit of preparation, but they don't actually do it for you. Yeah. You've got to do the work. It's definitely, it's definitely like seeing a therapist. Yes, you know, I, I did exactly. that for years, and I know a lot of the people that watch my videos are in therapy as well. I would get little tidbits every now and then, ones that just stuck with me, and it helped me get through the years, and I would go back to just that little tidbit. It's always nice to have that support system. Uh, stage five is crossing the threshold, and essentially this signifies making that commitment to change. There's no going back at this part of the story. You know, Dorothy's not in Kansas anymore. She's follow the yellow brick road. Harry Potter is in, uh, or uh, what's the place where he buys Diagonally. all his books? Diagonally. 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 Thank you, yes. Um, where he buys all his books, and mm -hmm. he's surrounded by wizards and um, witches and ghouls and goblins, and there's no going back to under the cupboard at this point. You know, I love this part of the story because it definitely, it definitely signifies a change is coming, and there's no going back. It's kind of like you've, you've gone past that resistance, and now you're taking a breath and you're just kind of being present in this new world or surrounded by this new idea. Yeah. Absolutely. That's kind of a quick stage. Usually it's signified by something as simple as follow the yellow brick road yeah. or, but it really signifies that commitment from the hero to continue on their journey. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a celebration too in a way, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, number six is test allies and enemies <laughs> or in the internal journey is uh, experimenting with new conditions so mm. you're in that new world it's not an ordinary at all everything is different everything has changed very quickly you find out who your friends are i don't listen to country music but there's a country song that's called find out who your friends are <laughs> <laughs> so that just came to you, huh? yeah it did <laughs> but you f you figure it out who's uh -huh. for you on this journey who are the people that are going to support you in movies and superhero movies. These are your sidekicks. You know, Batman has Robin. Harry has Ron. Harry has Ron and Hermione. And, and Hermione. And Hermione. Hermione. Dorothy has, do you remember? The, the Tin <laughs> Man and the Cowardly Lion and, oh my gosh, the Scarecrow. Scarecrow, yeah. yeah. So she very quickly finds out that all the other goofy people, they have a lot of wealth of support for her. And there's different things that she can learn from them. If you don't have people that support your journey, because sometimes that happens too, you have to find them. You know, you can't go through your new life or your new journey alone. It's not, we're not put on this world or in this earth to 
to live alone or to be hermits. We have to go through this world with other people. And that could be anybody. It could be friends. It could be family. It could just be a therapist. It could be a coach. It could be teammates or employees or employers yeah. or coworkers. But it has to be somebody. Yeah. So you have to find your um, tribe. Some sort of tribe. You have to find oh, I love that tribe. word. Tribe. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Find your tribe for your journey. In that respect, you're also going to have people that don't support it. By nature, um, you know, people will question like, what you doing, sis? That's a little weird. So they will challenge a decision you're making or they're gonna be like, nope, you're never gonna succeed in that mm -hmm. or I don't believe in you. They use the word enemies, that's a little harsh. Yeah, yeah. But in essence, it's really just that fact of that there are people that are not going to support you. Yeah, they're kind of probably still at that stage of the refusal of the call yes. or your call. Yes, the absolutely. They still have to go through their own journey in relation to your journey. Yeah. So absolutely, they're still kind of scared for you mm -hmm. of what change you're gonna make. And that happens, I think, by nature. Um, I think what's really nice about that kind of idea too is as soon as you realize those people that are kind of holding you back, you can make that decision that they're not gonna hold you back. And even if they were in the past resisting your change, they have an opportunity to then grow themselves. Absolutely. And so as long as you kind of stick to your guns and you move forward. Lead by example. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What's kind of cool about them too, the significance of the enemy, is that like at first change might seem like rainbows and butterflies and oh, we got this. But it's really important to know that it's not always easy. So this is kind of, they call it enemies or tests that we are like tested to see, are you really committed to this change? Mm -hmm. or are you gonna let that person hold you back? They really do play a significant role in a story because otherwise our change journey would be so simple. So they yeah. definitely have a role. So they, they represent that past as well. Like you're, maybe you were saying the same thing at that refusal of the call area and they're just kind of revoicing that same fear you had. Absolutely. And you're able to be like, just see how committed you are to that. Then. Absolutely. Yeah. So for Harry Potter, he had Draco Malfoy, the little blonde boy that instantly was like, hey, <coughs> uh, oh, oh, he was, yeah, <laughs> not pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, very quickly they learned about Voldemort too. And Wizard of Oz, Dorothy meets the flying monkeys. And mm -hmm. she then very quickly learned that there was her ultimate boss mm -hmm. lady of the wicked which i'm pretty sure she was of the east <laughs> that's you know there's still an enemy out there that you, there's still something you have to conquer in order to keep going with your journey oh, i want to try my best witch cackle <laughs> <laughs> that's fine <fun. laughs> you know, she's, she's holding the, the wand, wand. Right? i love breaking out of wands Yes. <laughs> I, I have bigger ones upstairs, but here's my little wand. <laughs> we love Harry Potter. Yeah. But there's wands and that was a real wand. Mm -hmm. So that works really good. Stage seven is the approach. You know the part of every movie where the music starts getting dramatic? And you know mm -hmm. something big's coming. We're getting towards the climax. That'll be the next stage. But right now we're working up to it. You have to learn how to work with your peers and against your enemies to get to the climax of the story. So this kind of is signified by different journeys that the characters go on together, different um, tests and tribulations that they go through. Practicing, you know, if I think of old superhero movies, right, they always have little guys. I always think about Power Rangers. Do you remember? Oh yeah, the putties, Power right? They had to kill the putties, the putties yeah. in order to kill the big boss, and there was always a big boss at the end of it. <laughs> I'm totally the pink Power Ranger, by the way. Can oh, you? yeah. Oh, gosh. Yep, that was me. Yeah. I did her for Halloween like eight years in a row, I think. <laughs> for those little mini bosses are necessary to learn a lesson from each and every one of them to make you strong enough to overcome the big boss mm -hmm. or the most significant change that needs to be made. It's kind of that, that repetition, or repetition. Every moment is a moment to recommit. Yes, to absolutely. Journey. Practice makes perfect. This mm. is the practice stage, you know? Um, this is where you are just constantly learning new skills and practicing them and preparing to make your big change. So I think of this in the real world and in my own journey when I had all kinds of different jobs and I kept yes. upgrading for another job that was harder and, and then like downgrading when I got laid off, but learning from that experience and then getting a new job that was more what I wanted and then realizing that's not what I want anymore. And, then, <laughs> and it's just this whole journey for sure absolutely and same with relationships too absolutely like you, you fall in love with a type in the beginning and you're head over heels 
and then it ends for any kind of reason. But that was practice. Yeah. It was practice it was, for the next one and the next one. It's very free to learn from. Yeah. Um, I loved that in that Spirit Junkie book from Gabrielle Bernstein. She really painted that picture of how in her relationships, every single one, she had to really put in her mindset. That was necessary learning experience mm -hmm. for me to get to where I am. Yeah, it's kind of a lot about when those tests come up. It's a moment for you to be able to kind of forgive the past in a little bit. Yes. And like as soon as you say, I learned from that, it's kind of forgiving it. Yeah. And it's like not no regret leaving it in the past and moving forward absolutely mm -hmm. in the harry potter before he got to the major part which we'll talk about in a minute him and his friends had to go through a series of challenges i think there was three of them to get to the dungeon or the uh sorcerer's stone or the oh, sorcerer's yeah, yeah. stone so they had to the three had a dog yeah. they had to play a flute to put him to sleep they had to figure that out together that's another thing and um your your peers your friends your supports really come into play to help you figure out how to make your major change. They then played wizard in chess. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and I don't know what order this was. I think that yeah, I think the last was, one. Was and then there was the flying keys. The flying keys. Yeah, yeah. Where they had to pick just the right one or something like that. And I recognize like in each of those, someone else shined too. Yes. So I know Ron was great with the, the chess board yeah. and everything. That's important as well because uh, we are not know-it-alls. We have our strengths, but we have our weaknesses. When you have other people in your life, their strengths play off of our strengths and we can accomplish anything, mm -hmm. which is really cool. That's so why that tribe is so important. Yes. Yeah. So important in life. I was actually just watching a video, Lewis Howes. It was all about creating a tribe, mm. and it's really well done. I'm going to put that in the awesome. description too. So. Yes. <laughs> My favorite part of the hero's journey. Well, actually, this is the most defining part of the hero's journey. Stage eight is called the ordeal. The <sighs> break or break part of the story. It's the biggest change. It's the climax. It's the part of the story where the hero is going to die or something else is going to die. Like death. And that's such a morbid concept. It signifies concrete, never coming back, never going to go back. Usually something or somebody dies. In a movie, if you think about the Wizard of Oz, she defeats the Wicked Witch. And in uh, Harry Potter, he defeats the Professor, mm, Quirrell. Professor Quirrell. Yeah. Out of death, comes new life so in the ordeal is when the hero confronts his or her greatest fear whatever it is that has stopped them from doing the rest of their story or they would not be able to go move on with that story if that thing or that person did not die now i don't wish death on anybody ever like don't wish somebody dies in your life don't do that <laughs> to yourself but it's the concept of what needs to no longer exist in your life to move on with your story mm. So for me, um, you know, my ordeal is overcoming procrastination and perfectionism. I'm still working on that every single day. I don't know that I've gotten past this part of my story, although I have some goals for it. But until I stop procrastinating, I won't create what I'm creating in my business, in my life, in, in my relationships, everything. That's the part of my story where I will defeat procrastination. Mm -hmm. I love the symbolism of in movies and storytelling when they end their biggest fear, when they kill their greatest enemy, when they you know defeat the biggest boss, because it really just shows that that thing no longer exists in their world and they can move on. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking about what my main ordeal would be right now, and it brings up quite a few things that I, yeah. I'm concerned about. I know I have a lot of self-doubt from like the past that still kind of resonates Ditto. with me, and so I feel myself kind of folding inwards, and that comes out through procrastination and mm -hmm. perfectionism for sure. Yeah. But then I also remember like, oh, finances, that's terrifying for me. <laughs> so if yes. I was able to overcome kind of the fear of loss and the fear of lack, losing money or not being able to find more income and what if I don't find clients and stuff, like that's definitely something that I would love to just slay yeah. and move on from. Yeah. And yeah. Now in most of the ordeals, in, in most stories, the hero is doing it by themselves. Now, if you think about like Harry Potter, his friends had to stay behind for that part of the journey. Yeah. Same with the Wizard of Oz. Although her friends were there, she ha she and only she could have defeated that Wicked Witch. That's very symbolic as I well in that. Right? Yeah, right. this is your right. defining moment. And that almost seems like a lot of weight or pressure to put on yourself, but nobody can do it for you. Mm. This would be the thing in your life that only you 
can overcome with as much support and guidance and encouragement as you need, but you have to do it for you. Nobody else can do it for you. It's very significant. It's a, yeah. Like I said, this is the best, most of the people's favorite parts of movies and stories is because it's just that defining moment of yeah. who are you, how can you accomplish this, and how are you going to move on with your story. It kind of makes me think of the should I stay or should I go. <laughs> yes. And I see that for when you're working with people that have addictions, yes. bringing this part up, that's like, oh gosh, yeah. leaving that addiction behind. and Because it's kind of like, no matter which way you step, your life is going to be completely different. Absolutely. Even if you were to go back, it's going to be completely different because you've gotten so far. Right. Yeah. And don't be surprised if it takes a couple times to get past the stage. Like I said, I'm still working on it for sure. Stage nine, the reward. I love this stage too because this is after you have defeated what you need to defeat. What do you get from that? This is essentially like what are you after in life? Why are you making this change? What do you hope to gain from making that change? And you know, in the in the hero's journey, there's a huge lesson learned or prize they get or significance or status they get out of accomplishing their ordeal. And oh, they say out of death comes new life. This is new life sage. What lesson did you just learn from confronting your greatest fear and overcoming that? What can you do with your life now? Think about that. If you ended your biggest bad habit in your life, whatever that may be. I have many of them. You know, I think about my clients in jail and they commit to ending their addiction to do everything they could possibly do to squash it. What life could they have? Mm. It gives me chills to think about. Like, and I really want them to get chills as well. Like, what would you do if you didn't have to wake up every morning and get a fix or you didn't have that threat of some drug over your shoulder going to control your life. Like, mm -hmm. what, would, what could you do with that? That defining moment of the ordeal really sets the stage for the reward. And what are you getting out of, yeah. of that? I feel that a lot for whenever I overcame my eating disorder. When I just decided to commit to eating and getting healthy and healing my mindset, especially, I, I realized that what was the reward was more fun yeah. and joy and pleasure, like actually allowing myself to enjoy life because the whole starvation thing was starving myself of joy mm -hmm. and pleasure and life. Yes. Yeah. So now you really remember what that kind of things feel yeah, like. Yeah, and that's why I play, you know, ukulele and I sing and I dance and I'm weird. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all okay. that. Wasn't doing that when that's I was That's all you. That's yeah. all you. That's who you are. I mean, this really is coming back to who you are not influenced by your demons, mm. your your boss, your your biggest fears anymore. It's coming back to who you are. The reward is figuring that out. Um, for some of us, you know, the reward is figuring out who we are. You know, for me, I'm working on my purpose, figuring out what my purpose is or what my legacy is going to be to give back to. And that's part of this journey is, is figuring out your legacy mm. and how you're gonna give back. So I really like this in the, um, Wizard of Oz, because Dorothy kills the wicked Game witch. On, the witch is dead. Yep, yeah, they get to celebrate. So the reward often includes a celebration of some sort as well. But she knew now from that point that she was going to be able to go home to Oz. She was able to complete her journey back because they were on that journey to the Wizard of Oz. Now, obviously, she'll find something else out different when she gets there, but that still is very significant. Her reward is now she has learned that in order to get home she had to believe that she could go home in the first place mm -hmm. all up until that point she didn't believe she was ever going to make it home there are so many things holding her back but once that witch was dead she's like you know what now i can make it home to mm -hmm. kansas and until she had that belief she was never going to make it back home to kansas mm -hmm. with harry potter the reward and the first film was that hogwarts is safe he defeated that professor and voldemort didn't die but he fizzled off into some um, particles and space and time and for that minute and for the rest of the school year Hogwarts was safe. That was Harry's reward was protecting himself um, knowing that he could defeat and that he had the power to be an awesome wizard mm -hmm. and to keep him and his students safe at the at the school. Go Harry. Go Harry. And Dorothy. And Dorothy. <laughs> and Dorothy. Yeah. Uh, stage 10 then would be the road back. So you can't stay in Oz forever. Sorry to say. Mm -hmm. Although, like, it's such an empowering feeling 
to overcome what you need to. Life is life. You have to go back to your ordinary world in some form or fashion, right? You know, everything's going to return to normal even after you're you're pressing, the, you know, the changes. So the road back just signifies maintaining the change you've made and readjusting to the ordinary world. Now knowing what you know, I mean, the lessons learned, the reward you have, readjusting back to mm -hmm. your ordinary world. I think of Lord of the Rings. Okay. In the, the third one when all the hobbits are returning to the Shire. Mm, yes. And they're like all garbed out and their soldier gear mm -hmm. and everything like that. But they're coming back to this this kind of like a, an oasis in a way. Mm -hmm. All these trees and none of them have seen war. And they were just like, we learned so much and we're so different now. Yeah, just that kind of road back, especially because they were on the road back there too. Absolutely. Yeah. That, some of these stories literally, and that's the same thing <laughs> in the, um, Wizard of Oz. So the road back is, again, just kind of going back to your, your ordinary world with the experience that you have. And, and it's, it's a new life for you. It's a, it, that ordinary world doesn't look as ordinary as it did. Mm -hmm. I think about, um, I took pictures of these wilting flowers and I made a triptych of them. There were three of them. And the first one, the colors are just normal every day and it says before. And then the second one, it says during and it's black and white. It's mm -hmm. like, it feels like chaos and it's like, what, what color, where is this We're leading? And, and then the third one, the colors are different. They're radioactive. They're slightly more enhanced. And that's after, and that's like the stages of change. Yeah. Speaking of the stages of change, we're in the maintenance stage of change now. So it goes from pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. Maintenance is just maintaining the change. So that's where we are now. The stage 11 is the resurrection. I love this part of the story too, because you know when everything se seems like it's going to be okay, and then the music starts getting dramatic again, and you're like, uh-oh, what's coming? Yeah. <laughs> this is just one final rededication to maintain the change in life we're still going to have several threats there are going to be threats that will always exist for us no matter how strong we are in the change we've made life is life there's going to be snakes in the grass there's mm -hmm. going to be people that doubt us there's going to be you know something happens unexpectedly that's what the stage is about is that like last minute dangers of are you going to be able to maintain this change mm -hmm beyond anything that life's going to throw at you. And if not, what do you still need to learn? Who do you still need to get on your side? You know, this one really is the reevaluation stage. You're being tested to see if you can maintain that change in uh, the Wizard of Oz. And Dorothy finally gets into the air balloon mm -hmm. and the Oz turned out to be the little guy and he's, you know, was ready to take them home. And then the dog saw a cat the damn dog ran off yeah. and she had to get off the glue to save him. And she, again, that really signifies like she lost hope in herself. I'm never going to get back home to Oz. And that's when the good witch came and said, you know what? You could have went back home all along to Kansas. All you had to do was click your heels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all you had to do was believe in yourself. And the minute that you stopped believing you'd get home was the minute you stopped going home. So mm -hmm. now believe in yourself again, click your damn heels. <laughs> you got to Kansas. Yeah. So this is, again, this stage is just that last. You know, mm -hmm. in a movie or a book, that last challenge mm -hmm. that you need to that overcome. That hesitation. Yes. In a way. Yeah. 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 And again, these are all necessary parts of the story. So those, some of these things are unavoidable. Life is life. Again, I, I love I'm so wrapped. So. I'm like, you're <laughs> like, what happens next? Yes, I, I love it. That's why yeah. I love this story. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and then finally, the return with the elixir. This is the mastery where you've made the change, you've maintained the change, they call you a master of the change, you've learned that lesson, you've internalized and integrated that lesson, you are living that lesson, it would be selfish of you to keep it to yourself. You have to give it back. The hero goes back to their ordinary world and shares that lesson with other people. I love in Harry Potter because he goes back and says to his cousin and his aunt and uncle, like, listen, go ahead and test me or put me in that cupboard. I'm a wizard and I've got this magical powers now. And Test me, go ahead, you know. <laughs> this is the part of the story where you get to share your lesson, your change with other people to help them too. We are creatures of service. Mm. That is our purpose in life is to be of service to other people. And this is the service part of the story where we get to take what we learn and give back to other people. I, I love that it ends on this because it's kind of like the hero's journey then continues. Absolutely. Because as soon yes. as you finish this and you've written your whole story and your whole everything that you've learned and gone through, 
And now it's right in front of you to share with other people in different ways that you want to share it. Yeah. So whether you're sharing the story you just went to or you share what happens next for you or you just let people watch where you are now. Mm -hmm. Like I just love the symbolism in this part of the story because it really is the defining like I have figured it out. I'm ready to give back to somebody else who needs to figure it out too. I know that's definitely where I am in my life. So mm-hmm. I'm starting to give back by creating some videos. Yeah, and doing like some, this. Uh, collaborations. And you know, and me stuff. too. That's yes. why I started up my videos again. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, to, to share it, I can't keep this to myself anymore. You know, there's so many people that still need to figure that stuff out for themselves. And since I've somewhat figured it out, I've still got some growing to do. My story never stops. But like, I gotta share that with other people and help them in their journey too. Oh yeah, it's kind of like being that that mentor. Yes. Again, like throwing ourselves back in this moment. Absolutely. Yeah. So I like how you correlate those, yeah. um, the stages back, because it is. It's an ongoing journey. Everybody's in different stages, and but no matter where you are in your stage, other people play a role, and you play a role in other people's journeys mm-hmm. too. I, and it, it's um, just really interesting that you can have so many journeys going on at the same time yes, too. absolutely. You can have this general journey where so many things are coming together, but if you wanted to separate out your business life and your personal and what you want and get clear about your goals and what's holding you back, yes. it's just a really great opportunity and exercise to do that with. Yeah. I'm really excited that we sat down and made this Mad Lib version yes. to make it easier for other people to fill in the blanks and create their own hero's journey. It's a Mad Lib, it's just like an open area where you put in a word or a sentence and then it it helps you, it leads you through the other things, like describe your current world, describe the current people in your life, and then down at the bottom there's a huge area where you can actually write out your story your as a parent. story, form. yeah, in your yeah. own words. And if you have any trouble with that, I love doing this, and Susie as well. So please reach out to us because we, you know, I love helping people envision what their stories are going to be and to clarify certain parts where you might be a little like stuck, like, hmm, what, mm-hmm. what is the biggest lesson I need to learn? Let me, you know, let us help you clarify that. That thrills me. That gives mm-hmm. me chills to help people, you know, in my job where I do this, I have them kind of do like the Mad Lib. I just have them answer a series of questions and then I take it back to my office I type up their stories and I bring it back to group and I, and I read them with their permission I read them out loud and I make them come up with a funky superhero name which lightens the story but by the end of it these guys are in tears because they realize you know I make them write their journey of recovery that recovery is possible and look what your life could look like mm. if you did you know these stages so I love helping people write stories please let reach out to us and let us know if there's yeah. anything we can help you with the the Mad Lab. yeah leave comments below I'm gonna have some contact information uh, Kimmy has a Facebook page yes. that I'll link down there as well Absolutely. I'm obviously right here so <laughs> this has been great I had so much fun thank this you for great. letting me share this, yeah, this with your peeps great. And, this is like you know and an thank experiment you. yeah and, thank you for letting me uh, for being part of my journey too oh, you're thank definitely you. a very integral character in my hero's journey oh okay. this is, and <laughs> here too you know yes, like coming up with this mad limb and everything this is just the beginning of something really awesome yeah and I hope to have more tools that we can collaborate on oh, we to will. share with people and help them through their own recovery process yeah so stay tuned with Sue <laughs> we, we can see you more together yes. all right so so on that note that's okay. like yes. right. oh yeah on, on that, that note stay safe oh stay <laughs> on, on that, that note stay safe Stay strong and stay Stay tuned tuned into (laughs) yourself. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye. That was fun. That was fun. We're heroes, so we work through our fear. So we're working to the next stage. This is uh, I love that. By the way. <laughs>